Welcome back. My name is Tis. I'm a scholar, teacher and author. And what I've discovered here are the four spiritual laws of prosperity, according to Jesus, Yogananda, Bain Sedona. And don't think that the rich don't do this, because what you'll find is that they do. And I've discovered these principles to be really, really powerful. So if you're a spiritual person, if you lack finances, let's get to it. The first one is you have to devote one day a week to your soul. The second is you've got to do things for other people, whether that's a charity, a job or a business, you have to do things for other people and then you'll get the money. And when you get the money, you've got to thank the cosmos, thank the infinite, really feel that thankfulness in your heart for the money you receive. The fourth spiritual law of prosperity is you've got to share at least 10% of that money with the intelligent poor. And we'll talk about that in a moment. If you don't do the first one, worries, disorientation, confusion, lack of resources. If you don't do the second one, you can lack money in relationships and friendships. If you don't express gratitude, you can lose a little to a lot. It just depends on the situation. And if you don't share your wealth, you'll end up losing some of it, sometimes a lot of it. In my dad's case, he lost $1.4 million from not applying this principle. Now, when I did the first one, I attracted money when I had a business. When I did the first one, I attracted a second day job when I needed one. And when I had a lot of money and I did the first one, and when I spiritualized one of my days of the week, I attracted a free flight to Europe and I didn't know at the time that I had to go to Europe. So let's get to it. Jesus, this is what Jesus said. This is spiritualizing your Saturdays, spiritualizing one day a week. And it can be another day. Ideally, it would be a Saturday. He said that on this day, on the Sabbath, you will not do any work, but you'll search the light. You'll dwell in the light of your Lord, your consciousness. Remember, God is consciousness. Minimal cooking, minimal planning, grocery shopping, obviously working, daydreaming, intellectualizing, thinking. This should be a day of silence and solitude, a day of meditation, awareness walks in nature, perceiving, being, carrying the presence of consciousness in your aura as you walk around in nature, if that's what you're doing. Now, this manuscript was discovered in a secret European library. And this was discovered more recently. This is also Jesus. And he says, if you don't observe the Sabbath as a Sabbath, you'll not see the Father. And the Father is a provider of orientation, of guidance, of even a spouse, a soulmate, money. So if you want to see these things in your life, start with the Sabbath. Start with spiritualizing your Saturdays. Now, Yogananda had this to say about not doing the Sabbath. And because you don't observe that Sabbath, you do not give one day even pure, your whole mind to God, your week is full of worry and your months are full of worry and years of life spent in worry and the heart. Worries. So in 1930, the mastermind Bain Sedona had this to say. If you're a young prince or a young princess, and you can't drop everything you're doing just for one day and serve your soul just for one day. Achievements are nullified. Gurdjieff said something even more interesting, and I want you to really pay attention because most people have never read this. If you are working inwardly, nature will help you. For the person who is working, nature is a sister of charity. She brings this person what this person needs for their work. If you need money for your work, even if you do nothing to get the money, the money will still come to you from all sides. Nature is more intelligent than you are. She knows better than you which are the best conditions for your work. And if you work, nature will call upon conscious spirits who will arrange for you the conditions that you need. For the one who isn't working, there's nothing but chance. But for the one who does work, Nature will give this person, through these conscious spirits, everything that this person needs. This is what Jesus says here. 
all things, everything will be given to you. Everything meaning spouse, friendships, conditions, money, as long as you're doing this Sabbath, as long as you're really, really doing it properly. So if you're doing it properly, you'll attract money for your charitable endeavors if that's what you're doing. You'll attract a day job if you need one. You'll attract clients if you have a business. And then you'll get the money. Once you get the money, you're going to feel gratitude for having received the money. And then you're going to share at least 10%. And we're going to talk about this now for a few minutes because this is important that you understand it. God is truth and justice. There are people who bring truth and justice into this world. We want those people to be supported financially. Also, inner strength and new ideas. If you have a source of inner strength and new ideas, give to those groups, give to those people at least 10% so those people remain around in existence so that you can have your strength and ideas to, to do the things you need to do. So pilots, architects, engineers, musicians, spiritual teachers, all these intelligent but poor people, these are the ones we want to donate to. Not to the foolish poor, but to the intelligent poor who are already doing things, good things in the world, but they just need some support. Now, when you do this 10% law for a while, things get interesting. So let's have a look. Here, the billionaire Sir John Templeton told Tony Robbins that he's never seen anyone tithe for at least 10 years who didn't become incredibly financially free. And here, the wealthy businessman Robert Kiyosaki says that even when he was flat broke, he still donated 10%. And Bainser says here that if you don't sacrifice 10% of what you earn for God, these people who don't do it will experience a crisis. Now, after a while, and I would give it two months to see results with this 10% law. After a while, you'll eventually get into a position of financial prosperity, which is better than what you started with. And eventually you'll be able to go to the next level, which is 50%. And that's when I've seen people, they no longer alienate themselves from the rich. They no longer alienate themselves from the people they need in their lives. That's what the 50% law is all about. Now here, this is a really important chapter from chapter 149 from this book. The whole chapter is about money. And this wealthy man approaches Jesus and gets Jesus' attention, despite the fact that Jesus is surrounded by a crowd of people. And this wealthy man says to Jesus that I give half of my goods to the poor. And Jesus says to him, the benedictions of the Lord of hosts abide with you and all your house. Your life and faith are known to God. Above here, Jesus even says to him that I want to abide with you today. Okay, this is really significant. I want you to read the whole chapter when you get a chance. Now here, Sivananda the Yogi says something very similar. He says, give money like water. If you give, the whole wealth of the world will be yours. Money will come to you. This is an unrelenting law of nature. What Sivananda doesn't say here is, well, how much money do you give? But Jesus and Bainsa have already told us it's 50%. Now, if you want to consult me, createtheone.com is my website. There are some people who watch these videos and want to have access to me personally. There's a teaching of Jesus here that he says that let there be a person of understanding among you. And I do believe this is critical because if you're in a position where you need to make a critical decision, it's good to have someone in your life that you can consult. So go to createtheone.com. If I can be that for you, great. I encourage you, all of you watching this video to find someone in your life that is a, a, a person of understanding for you that you can consult in times of need. All the best for your prosperity. All the best for your peace.